excellent. Did the timekeepers do their job well? Yeah. yeah, excellent. Good, good, good start. So now, so we're going to move to our lightning talks. So the first talk is actually going to be from our own centre, the Centre for Gerontology and Rehabilitation in UCC. And I'm delighted to welcome Siobhan Fox, who's a postdoctoral researcher with her, with us. And she's just going to go through a little flavour of some of the things that we're doing in our centre related to palliative care in your generation. Thanks, Siobhan. Great. Thanks, Suzanne. So as Suzanne said, I'm just going to give a quick overview of some of the most relevant research to today that we're undertaking in the centre. I'm going to talk about palliative care needs in dementia, palliative care needs in Parkinson's disease, advanced care directives and acute hospital dementia care. So one of the biggest projects we have in this area and one that I'm directly involved in is the palliative care needs in PD projects which are funded by the Irish Hospice Foundation. So we've conducted a very large multi-method project, including a national survey of over 300 healthcare workers and interviews, <coughs> follow-up in-depth interviews with 30 healthcare workers in the Munster region. And what we found was that healthcare workers really felt that people with PD do have palliative care needs. However, they were, there was a lot of uncertainty around how their needs can best be met. Can these patients be referred to specialist palliative care? So our next step then was to go and talk to people with Parkinson's disease themselves and their carers because these are a group who can sometimes be overlooked in research. So I again conducted in-depth interviews with 19 people with PD and 11, or sorry, 12 carers. And I was surprised to find, I suppose, that there wasn't a lot of stigma at all around palliative care, that people were very open to any supports that might help them. However, some people didn't really know exactly what palliative care was and other people hadn't actually even heard of the term. So, Clearly, we needed more information about this area. So we went on to develop the first Irish national guidelines for palliative care for people with Parkinson's disease. So these followed a really, really rigorous development process, which was compliant with the National Clinical Effectiveness Committee. And we uh, put together, we conducted systematic reviews, and we had a national advisory group, including national and international experts, clinicians, researchers, and service users. So these were recently launched in April to coincide with World Parkinson's Awareness Month. They can be downloaded from the um, web link there on the slide, or we also have um, a few limited copies available over at our showcase stand if you're interested. Now our next step will, to be, will be to develop a shorter, more user-friendly version for people with PD and carers to use. Other research we have ongoing in this area include anticipatory grief in carers of people with Parkinson's disease, and we're also looking at palliative care needs of people with Parkinson's disease in nursing homes using the ESAS PD2. And finally, Suzanne and I are both members of an international working group on palliative care in PD, which includes researchers from across the world. Um, I attended the first international meeting of this in Denver, Colorado last October, and we're currently preparing for the next meeting in September. Another area where we have a lot of palliative care researchers um, with dementia has been as part of the national audits. So our centre have conducted two audits, the Irish National Audit of Dementia and the Northern Ireland Audit. And between them, we have audited all 47 hospitals, acute hospitals on the island of Ireland and reviewed 900 case notes. So it's a really, really big data set. Now, very, an interesting result that will be very relevant to today are, is the, when we looked at the 76 people with dementia who either died in hospital or who were referred for specialist palliative care. I can see from the graph that there is a really poor picture of symptom assessment. So for example, again, we're looking here at people who either died in hospital or who were referred to SPC, and only 73% of them had any kind of pain assessment recorded. And that wasn't just limited to formal pain tools. You can see things like mood as well were very poorly assessed. And what we also did there is highlighted in yellow um, those assessments which would be very useful to um, assessing what stage of dementia someone's at and for helping to plan future care. So again, things like weight loss or inability to um, achieve activities of daily living, these were very poorly assessed and they would be very good prognostic indicators. So another thing we have ongoing are palliative care needs in dementia. Again, this is um, a study that's funded by the Irish Hospice Foundation and has two complementary strands. So the first involves in-depth case studies of people who, with dementia who anticipate to be in the last six months of their life. So we're following them and their families and getting the viewpoints, multiple viewpoints from family members, healthcare workers about their palliative care needs and following up with them um, throughout the last months of life. We've already had one person who was part of the study who died during the study period and we've been following up with that family post-bereavement to get their viewpoints as well. 
As part of this, we've also um, conducted a nursing home education intervention in three pilot nursing home sites in Cork. And we are also um, giving extra palliative care support via dedicated palliative or dementia care coordinator. At the start of the study, we conducted baseline staff knowledge and attitudes to dementia, and we're going to conduct this again at the end of the study to assess change in attitudes. Now, complementary to this, we also have case studies looking at palliative care needs and people with young onset dementia, because there isn't a lot of information out there about this patient group. So firstly, we're collecting um, hype data of 100 people with young onset dementia who are in one of four acute hospitals in Cork and Dublin. So this is really useful as a means of case finding. We're particularly interested in finding out where people with young onset dementia are living. Um, we're looking at those who died in hospital and then pulling their notes to see what kind of interventions they received during the end of life. And complementing this, we're conducting four very in-depth case studies with people with young onset dementia in a similar fashion to the previous case studies. And we're very interested here to see how the palliative care needs of those with young onset dementia may be different or similar um, to that of other dementias. Finally, we also have strong research in the area of advanced care planning in the centre. So there's an ongoing HRB funded study that's looking at the implementation of the Let Me Decide Advanced Directive, which also includes the delivery of a palliative care educational programme for staff. Now, pilot data that we already have from an IHF funded study show that the Let Me Decide Advanced Directive and palliative care, when they're delivered simultaneously, are well accepted by staff, families and patients. And there is also a reduction shown in hospitalisations uh, when using this programme. Okay, so that's just a flavour of the research we're doing. Um, but just so you don't think it's all about palliative care, this is some of the other research we're involved in. And if you're interested in hearing any more about this, I'd invite you to come speak to us at our showcase stand and maybe collect one of our book of abstracts, which highlights some of our recent research. So thanks. <laughs>